everybody, and welcome to another episode of Horror Movie Night. This week, we are talking about Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed, and we're doing it for a good reason. It is the first acting role of She-Hulk herself. <laughs> At the time that this drops, She-Hulk will be on Disney+. Plus. I see that confused look on Kyle's face. Yes, the actress who's playing She-Hulk is the actress who played Ghost in yep, a little, Ginger Snaps 2. A little too. bleach blonde girl. <laughs> it took me... Wow. That's lovely. <laughs> Let me explain how I came to the understanding of this because it's idiotic. Hey, Scott, what did you watch this week? <laughs> yeah, shut up. All right. So like a dumb shit. And I've seen all three of these movies, mind you, in the past. Um, I'm like, why the fuck did Matt pick the shitty prequel to Ginger Snaps for the show? Is not. I, I don't remember it being fun or interesting. And I love werewolves and period pieces. And yeah. so I watched the whole fucking thing until about the last 10 minutes. Like, and I'm like, oh, no. Like menstruation? Isn't that what Ginger Snaps is all is about? That is a really – damn, that is a good fucking joke. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm mad at you for how good that joke is. So I'm 10 minutes to the end of, of Ginger Snaps back, and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. 10 minutes to the end? Is that what yeah. you said? Yeah, I watched 120 – or I watched an hour and 20 minutes of, of Ginger Snaps back. <laughs> I messaged Matt, and I'm like – fuck i'm like you meant ginger snaps two unleashed and so he's like yeah the one in the hospital no subtitle throws threw me off though too because i almost made the same mistake like ginger snaps back doesn't say two but for some reason whatever the subtitle is to the fucking one that you're talking about scott almost made me ginger watch it snaps too two unleashed is the second one and then ginger snaps back Oh, the see, I'm, see, I'm already confused. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Back seems like an immediate second. Exactly. To me. That yeah. seems like, I was, but it's because okay. it's going back in time. In time to the, to the, yeah. God, what a clusterfuck. And then the fourth one is Ginger Snaps for you, too. And then it's, <laughs> it's really fucked up. Anyway, so I'm watching the second Ginger Snaps of my day, and I'm like, wait a minute. Oh my God, this is why Matt picked this shit because She Hulk is going to be on. Because he messaged me and was like, just know. I was like, this isn't very interesting. This is when I was watching Ginger Snaps back, the beginning. And I, it was like, there's a very specific reason why I watch, why I picked this movie. And I, and it's going to make sense when it drops. And I was like, okay. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, there's not like any sort of anniversary for Ginger Snaps back, the beginning. And so I'm watching it and I go and look at I, I went and looked at the IMDb because I was like, what has Emily Perkins been doing? Um, yeah. and, and not much, which is great. It seems like she's just a normal person. Yeah. Living her life. Yeah. yeah and, and Matt, has, she is one of Matt's number one crushes. Absolutely. Oh, for Matt is sure. so in love with <laughs> Emily Perkins. So Emily Perkins, if you are listening, Matt Kelly, I know that you aren't single, but Matt Kelly is. So um, <laughs> if you want to open your marriage, you change your mind. <laughs> Um, yes. So anyway, I, I understood what he was getting at and I was like, good for you. Good for you, Matt. Let's never discuss Ginger Snaps back though. Okay. No, I have no interest in watching that movie again. Like I appreciate, I guess what they were doing, but Ginger Snaps back honestly breaks what I thought was an interesting concept that the Ginger Snaps movies were doing where like. The first one, as Kyle brilliantly made the joke, was about puberty and, and menstruation and, and women womanhood and all of that stuff. And then Ginger Snaps 2 like, has such an allegory for drug addiction that I'm like, wow, they're really... Is, is it an each... allegory, Matt? I'm pretty sure it's just drug addiction, my buddy. Whatever. But but like <laughs> each movie, they're like using werewolfism to talk about some like real life shit. Yeah. And then yeah. Ginger Snaps back is just like, man, it's just a colonial movie. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> on paper, I should love it. It's got Catherine yeah. Isabel, it's got period costumes, and it's got werewolves. But it is yeah. so unpalatable and slow. Yeah. It's got everything I do not want out of a zombie movie. So much arguing. It it feels more like a zombie movie than a werewolf movie in a lot of ways, actually. But Ginger Snaps 2, I actually really like this sequel. I am a big fan of Ginger Snaps we know. 2. It took, I, it took, I took know. me it took me about an hour to come around <laughs> onto it. Like because I think ultimately I enjoyed it as a whole, but it took me a fucking long time. I mean it's so, not Ginger Snaps. That's no. like the big thing is like Ginger Snaps hooks you right away it it so i think i told this briefly but i didn't tell it right 
So the way that I heard of Ginger Snaps was because of a guy that I was friends with who was on the lacrosse team in high school. And they were doing a game in Canada and they had to kill time. So they went to the movies and they saw Ginger Snaps 2. And he was like, I feel like I had a lot of trouble following that movie not seeing the first movie. Like they just saw it like completely blind but he's like i think you would like it but you probably need to see the first movie <laughs> in order for it to make any sense so like i was watching this with my mind also being like imagine watching this not having seen the first ginger snaps movie and it's got to be kind of baffling because they don't really the first ginger snaps movie does a really great job of like slowly showing you what the werewolf transformation is about and how it's breaking the rules of a werewolf transformation. It's not just like, oh, the full moon hits and then you turn to a wolf and then you turn back into a person. Like it's very clear that in the ginger snaps world, it's like once you turn into a wolf, that's just your fucking existence. Yeah. From that point out. They don't really lay those rules out in this movie. You just have to know that. Otherwise the ending makes zero sense yeah. to you. And I didn't remember the first movie really all that much. So yeah. I had some I had to Who pick up the we... pieces a little bit. Uh, Did we discuss bacon, it with Bacon? Out. Bacon, because yeah, his oh, girlfriend because his, was his an extra. His fiance in it. was an extra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bacon, uh, Bacon's fiance was an extra in one of the the high in the school first one in Ginger in snaps. the high school yeah. scenes. Yes, yeah. she's, she's Canadian. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Canadian bacon. That's yeah, oh, that was, we, we made, made that, that joke. joke. Don't All worry. Right, good. <laughs> you better believe we didn't let that go. <laughs> I'm here. Uh, I'm just a little <laughs> late to the party. But I, I really did like this movie. This is like definitely a got it on. Netflix in the disc yeah. in the mail immediately watched it and was like I really like that I went out and bought the DVD probably the same week so that I could add it to the collection um, as you do I I like I like everything I love Emily Perkins in this movie as like kind of a junkie for Wolfsbane because it's the only thing that's like keeping her human I love ghost ginger popping up and like being like the devil on her shoulder but mm -hmm. also kind of her conscience at points and i love the whole plot with ghost like i i think that See, I they think do the a ghost good plot line is the only good thing in this movie like they do a good job of dropping subtle hints where you kind of if you're re-watching it knowing that ghost is a fucking psychotic kid you can catch like the little breadcrumbs but i didn't pick up on the breadcrumbs mm -hmm. the first time i watched no, it so I like didn't get the, i didn't get any of it at all yeah so was like when you get that big cow? reveal first yeah. watch mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it's like little stuff like when she goes to visit barb and she's trying to reach for like the help button and like stuff like that but it's like so subtle and quick yeah that like and it, it's also like i just read it that she was annoying right yeah like i just read it that she was like an annoying yeah not that kid. she intentionally is, burnt her grandmother right, in a fire. <laughs> like, right. It felt like, so here, I wrote this fucking shit down and, and, and it happened during the group masturbation scene, of course. Oh my God. Oh my God. That scene. scene is unbelievable as well. But yeah. if this movie was made in 2022 or 20, 2020, like 2020 to 2022, if this fucking movie was made now without the whatever sound library that fucking... Deme I, I keep saying dimension films whatever it, a studio put this out has the same sound library of every straight to dvd industrial oh, yeah. background music that exists right if this movie was made now without that background this would be in a, an a24 type of movie like this would yeah. be like a high concept like uh -huh. attempt to tell an allegory about drug addiction and womanhood while also telling about like mental health and like how women are treated in mental health facilities and like if it didn't have the mid 2000s edge that it does and it took itself more seriously this would be a fucking like this would be knocked out of the park as far as a werewolf movie goes it's not it is for like i liked it but it's still very of its time for me oh yeah and that and actually i i i I misspoke before the first hour i was into it the last half hour dragged for me even though the twist happens it was the reverse it was like that first hour i was following along but then we were in this cabin for like so long 
Yeah. Like we're just in there for so long and it doesn't feel like it sets up much else for me. Like I could no. just have gotten jumped right to ghost being ghost and been fine. And that was the thing. I feel like I remembered the cabin scene being about 10 minutes. So when we got to the cabin scene and I hit that, how much time is left and saw that there was still 25 minutes left to go. We have like, ads oh. on Tubi. Yeah. It was oh, like 45 minutes. Listen, baby, I had Oh, you DVD. have the DVD. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're too high class for us, Matt. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that scene hits a drag for me, but I don't know. Like, it, it wasn't bad. It was just, yeah. I just was like, we're here for a long time. Yeah, I would never say that this is a movie that I would watch often, but yeah. like, similarly to how I weirdly feel like if I start watching Jaws, it's like, well, now I got to watch Jaws too, And then like... <laughs> It leads all the way down to watching all four Jaws Just movies. Just that normal you don't have human to do behavior <laughs> yeah. that everybody regular, feels that when regular they human watch behavior Jaws. That happens. Yeah, my friend Lauren has been on a weird rant on Facebook lately about Jaws two, and I think it's convinced me that I do need to pick Jaws two eventually for the podcast because. Jaws 2 does this kind of brilliant thing where they're like, what if we just make a slasher movie, but the slasher is a shark? <laughs> but the 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 start of it was that she wrote, Jaws 2 is a legitimately good movie. There, I said it. It's not a great movie, but it's a solid like three star out of four star movie. Anyway, it has some ridiculous, ridiculously awesome set pieces and a surprisingly creative premise. And then like a couple hours later, <laughs> she writes... You know what? I want to continue talking about Jaws for a little bit. Jaws is categorically a better movie than Best Picture winner Farce Gump. Yes, I said it. I don't care how great Tom Hanks' acting is. That movie is way too transparently manipulative, and a way better movie would know how to hide it. It was just the Oscar baitiest Oscar bait of all time when it came out. And I was like, all right, that's convinced me we're doing Jaws 2 next summer. Damn. <laughs> Damn, really upset about Forrest. <laughs> don't take don't take them to Bubba Gump, dude. She's <laughs> but if I was to watch if I was to watch Ginger Snaps, I would probably be like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna watch Ginger Snaps too. I wouldn't watch Ginger Snaps back unnecessary because it's a prequel. It doesn't really add anything to the story. But I do think that it is in a world of sequels where we constantly have like Freddy Krueger is a prime example. We get a Freddy movie. Everybody dies but one survivor person. They kill Freddy. Whole new group of teens show up. Nine times out of ten, we never even think about that survivor person again. It's just a whole brand new story. I like the idea that they took where Ginger Snaps left off, and Ginger Snaps left off on a pretty solid, hey, that's like the closing of the chapter type note, but said, you know what? She did that blood handshake, and like now she is a werewolf, and that's got to complicate her fucking life. So let's kind of see where that yeah. goes. And I yeah. I appreciate it. It's why I talk so highly of the Child's Play franchise is that the movies all work in a continuation of each other. Like where one ends, the next one right. immediately picks up the storyline. And I, I appreciate that about Ginger Snaps too because I don't think enough horror sequels actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Man, it's a wet fart over here. What's that? No, no, I just... <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just it's just there. It just exists as a movie and uh it's I like fine. It. It's fine. Like I don't know. I, I I was really trying to rack my brain remembering Ginger Snaps and I can't remember a fucking thing. You need to like, rewatch Ginger Snaps because Ginger I can't Snaps remember is a thing. fun as hell. And I and I <laughs> like was doing that last night too while we were watching it and I was just like, I don't remember. Um, I was also trying to figure out what my my beer oh, is. Beer? I'm not going to yeah. drink this beer. It's it, it, it's a it's called Darko the Moon. It's a pumpkin stout from Elysian, but it's a pumpkin stout and it's 90 degrees in my basement. Um, <laughs> also, pumpkin stout in the summer is not I'm good. Not the vibe. I'm good. I'm good. I'm still I'm still sipping on last week's beer. Yeah. A whole week later, whole week I just later? came right back down to the desk. <laughs> it's still here. There's no like a mold. fly floating in it and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Very it was it's very fruity, so it would have been that way. But anyway, I think watching it on Tubi recommended me a bunch of other werewolf movies, and I think we I think we talked about this before, where like 
Well, I'm sorry. Side note, I hate watching people shave and the fact that this movie opened up with somebody <laughs> shaving and then it being painful, which is my number one. Like nine times out of ten, it won't be an issue there won't be an issue shaving, right? Like everybody's just shaving and it's fine. Or there's like one of those little like ah, ah, nicks, yeah. you know, like that happens. This became pain and I was like, This is why. This is why I didn't shave in college. Like my beard was just this big old Amish beard. I couldn't be bothered. Uh, but I, there's a bunch of werewolf movies that get suggested now and one of them was bad bad moon that i remember from Love which bad we watched moon. on oh, it, which man. was great so but good. for the most part i don't love werewolf movies um, we've had this conversation many times though and it, it takes this, a very this special yeah. werewolf movie yeah and i think that this like towed the line for me like it's still well this isn't a werewolf movie this is an addiction movie right yeah yeah and yeah that's, yeah, yeah. That's why Matt was like, oh, is that came over like a wet fart. Because, like, I don't have anything to say about it. Like, I thought that shoehorning Catherine Isabel, Ginger, back into the movie as the ghost kind of, like, taunting Emily Perkins, Bridget, just, it. I didn't like it when this movie came out, and I saw it, and I don't like it now. I just don't like that motif. I never have. Yeah. I, so and I also don't like drug movies like I never will. And I understand this is an allegory. I'm not an idiot. Um, yeah. But I just, you know, like this wasn't a bad watch. I just don't really have anything overly positive or negative to say. And that's what I feed the show with is like <laughs> extremes. <laughs> So I just don't uh, yeah. have a whole lot to when say. When it just exists, you're just like, I too exist. It's, and yeah, here yeah. we so are existing I, I together. I exist <laughs> watching this movie. <laughs> so we well, will, so for the wrong movie first. And yeah. then. So I've been the there, man. So one of the things that we do talk so, about when we talk about oh, werewolf man, movies, the werewolf movies c- tend to be made or broken by like how good the werewolf looks and the transformation scene. And a lot of this is hidden in shadow yeah. throughout most of it. Yeah. But in Ginger Snaps 1, I said this, and the few glimpses that we get of the werewolf throughout this movie, I still feel like I really like the design that they go with for the werewolves in this franchise where it's almost like a very skeletal, like, yeah. like minimal hair, freaking weird looking wolf. Like I... I did that the transformation. The, the wolf in the third one, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. This one was decent. This one was was decent because they're also. The I mean, the werewolf there wasn't looks any... fine. It's yeah. when Bridget is changing into a werewolf that looks, looks absolutely cool terrible. Yeah. yeah. Though, though, could you imagine? So the back to the group masturbation scene <laughs> briefly. The so she wakes up from the the dream. Uh, she she falls into like a masturbatory trance, I guess. Um, Don't we? And all? She, her arm, she pulls out her arm, and it's a werewolf arm. But then when she awakes, she's got hair on her palm, so it's like it's not fully a dream. Like there's still like some transfer. Yeah, it's not a full wet dream. Could you imagine jerking off? Either way, male, female, non-binary uh, uh, person. Could you imagine masturbating with hair on your palm? That's gotta be wild. Well, that's like why they ass try ass. and scare children by saying pubescent kids by being like, "If you masturbate, you'll grow hair in your palms." Let me I, tell you, whoa, friends. I never, I don't think I've not ever heard true. That. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm not sure if I heard that either. There's plenty but, uh, of socks and tissues to tell you otherwise. Yes, <laughs> talked about. Exactly. Um, no, but I I have to tell you something though. You were talking about Tubi ads, so Kyle and I watched it on Tubi. Matt didn't, so Matt wasn't accosted sorry, Matt. by this shit. But God damn, I had to take notes. So the first ad I got, <laughs> well, this isn't the first time this has happened, but this is almost as fucking crazy as the last time it happened. So there was an addiction recovery ad, like a targeted ad for addiction recovery on this. And I was like, Whoa. that is, that's very specific to me. And I'm impressed. <laughs> but then it was followed almost immediately by the most insane in Shane is what I said because it's an insane sheets commercial. Guys, let me read to you the some of the dialogue from this commercial. This this commercial is um sheets for kids. And it's this kid sitting at a table at sheets, apparently, with his mom, and the mom bought him a salad and he goes, Your mom loves sheets. And she loves salad, so she brought you to Sheets for kids because she loves salad and she gave you a salad. Doesn't she know that they serve fries here? Why'd she buy, if your mom loves you, why'd she buy you a salad? 
They have fries here. Maybe she doesn't love you. Why the sheets not? Seriously. They said, your mom doesn't love you. (laughs) (laughs) And then the tagline was like in this weird fucking font. Why the sheets not? For children. What child is watching Ginger Snaps 2 Unleashed? First uh, of the all, the coolest of children. <laughs> you gotta find you gotta find me that commercial if at all possible. I need all to, you need I to need do to is you just need to watch anything else on Tubi. It will come up. See, but I don't have sheets in my area. Yeah, sheets aren't think, near us, so it's yeah. not gonna target oh, it's, us. It's targeted in Ohio. Yeah, okay. I got I got this fucking political ad just bashing Bob Stefanowski uh, <laughs> over and over again every damn ten minutes. <laughs> they were telling us that Bob. Stefanowski is too extreme for Connecticut. And I believed them. <laughs> Do they believe that he is too extreme on the left or the right? Bro, I don't know. Just too <laughs> didn't do your research? No, and it wasn't even paid for by a different political party. It was a completely It was literally his like, political party. <laughs> like who the fuck knows? Our candidate is too extreme for He's you. Too extreme so, for you. Oh, I was like it. I this ties in beautifully in some fucked up way. Do so it. while Kyle's while Kyle's talking about political ads and and whatnot, I just hopped on Facebook for a quick second and got bombarded with a sponsored ad from Z2 Comics, and says Z2 Comics has signed up to bring you my first graphic novel. Signed copies available for pre-order. When I look back on that historic day, I think, how did I fit balls that big into skin tight jeans? And then reflect on the fact that I still stand for everything I stood for all those years ago, and I'm ready to do battle again. This is an advertisement for the comic book, D. Snyder. He's not going to take it. The true story of the one-man revolution that helped save free speech. Look at that fucking (laughs) art to that graphic novel. That's the Toxic Avenger meets D. Snyder. Meets Kid Rock. Yeah. Is, is that officially D. Snyder or is that someone who's just saying they're D. Snyder? Because that seems too on the fucking nose for D. Snyder. <laughs> Have you guys ever read his Teenage Survival <laughs> Guide? <laughs> wow. Is that on Horror Finds? It's on Horror Finds. Yo, this shit's dead fucking rare. It's, <laughs> yeah, this thing's I, like 200 that bucks. That looks like that came out of Scholastic Bookmobile <laughs> shit in 93, man. Can I give you just briefly the please one, read like, some to a us. couple of the names of the uh, just a table of contents? No, I, I want yeah. I want the synopsis. My teenage survival guide is not a map that will magically lead you down the road from your teen years to adulthood. What I am offering are facts and my perceptions about growing up. Although not all of these situations will pertain to you, I'm willing to bet that a good number of the dilemmas I faced and feelings I had will ring true. Perhaps through my experiences, you can better understand yourself and those around you. You may want to share the survival guide with your parents to help them gain a better understanding of you and your world, which is dramatically different from the one in which they came of age. But ultimately, this book isn't for your parental units. It's for you. P.S. No need to thank me. I'm being paid. D. Snyder. <laughs> what a great closing line. Yeah, give yeah. us a couple table content chapters Okay, real so quick. I, this is it's, it's very quick. Uh, the first section or the introduction is called Thy Teendom Come. Uh, the first section is just called You. The sections of you include the good old days sucked. I'm not everybody. So who am I? What's going on down there? A teenager (laughs) in love. Sex is a four letter word. Tough decisions, drugs and alcohol. That completes. Wait, 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 wait. (laughs) So there are two two thoughts in my mind about what the four letter word sex could be. Yeah. And they're very extreme. Right, right, right. One starts with L. And one yeah. starts with F. Which one do you think the D. Snyder thinks? <laughs> uh, I, I will report back. My favorite thing, though, is that some of those chapters, like what's going on down there. Oh, no, it's definitely like... fuck. It's definitely yeah. fuck. The, the, fir- <laughs> the first sentence, I'm sorry, Matt, but the first sentence is there are many reasons to have sex, but only one is really valid to physically express or culminate the genuine love and desire between two people. So love is already <laughs> ex- ex- described in the description of So fuck. it has to be fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's fuck. yeah. Yeah. What were you saying, Matt? I was going to say the titles like what's going on down there sound like the names of fake sex ed videos that the Simpsons kids would watch in school. <laughs> I was like. getting some serious Corey Feldman vibes from that personally, yeah. but that's just me. If you like music and you like podcasts and you like to laugh and you like to learn, you need to immediately subscribe to One Hit Thunder. 
Each week on the One Hit Thunder podcast, we dive deep into the story and back catalog of a one hit wonder band or artist. From there, we have a good, healthy discussion as to whether they brought the one hit thunder or were nothing more than a one hit wonder. We have a huge back catalog and we've done episodes on everything from Don't Worry, Be Happy and the Macarena to King of Wishful Thinking and Cumbersome. I promise you're going to love the show more than Jaquan loved getting tipsy and even more than Bobby Boris Pickett loved making alternate versions of the Monster Mash. Subscribe to One Hit Thunder wherever you get your podcasts. So, Scott, you got any questions for me? What would your double feature be for this? A slightly less on the nose drug allegory in a much better movie called Brain Damage. <laughs> that would be a pretty wow. sick That's follow up. <laughs> I'm all about it. Kyle, what That's about you, dude? Solid. Uh, Twilight New Moon um, <laughs> would be my pairing. Uh, the more werewolf heavy of the Twilight series. Um, wow, I guess you're Team Edward, huh? Wait, no. Yeah. Jacob. He's a big I Jacob don't fan. fucking know, obviously. Yeah. You know, I just think I like Bella's dad. Uh, yeah. More. I'm Team <laughs> Bella's dad just being like, dude, I don't fucking know. Like, yeah, what, what, is, he, is he like a he hot dad? He needs to read Dee or... book. Uh, yeah. No, he's just very, he's just sort of there. Yeah. Um, he's, you know, it's kind of like when people ask me, like, who's the best of Rory Gilmore's boyfriends? And it's like, team, Rory needs to be an independent woman. <laughs> Single yeah. for a little bit. Just, just this like, is focus not on the yourself, Gilmore Rory. Guys podcast. <laughs> she needs to not be defined by her relationships with Dean, Jess, or Logan. She just needs to be herself for a little bit. Um, in all actuality, <laughs> so that's actually Carly's double feature. My 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 double feature is a movie called Paper House. It was Bernard Rose's. No, uh, no, yeah. Kyle, no. Okay, your own I, good. I, I, no. I picked Twilight New Moon on my own <laughs> fruition. Fruition. Scott, what that's did what word. did you pick? Volition of your own volition. volition. Thank you. Permission of my own permission. <laughs> of your own emission. <laughs> <laughs> Which I got checked. The state of Connecticut already gave me the okay on my emissions. <laughs> okay, so dumb. Oh, Thank you. Boy, that that wasn't the emission I was talking about. All right, so <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven possible double features are they both are they all double featured with this movie or the one that you watched originally <laughs> none of them are double featured with ginger snaps back okay. i don't know which would be the funniest um i actually think i need to go with the one that would actually make my night better which would be to watch um cellar dweller because okay. that is what Bridget becomes at the end of this movie is yeah, a cellar dweller. Yeah. But if Which I was is kind trying of a to make sad a sad ending to her, I, I, I don't well, like she doesn't know anymore. Bridget. She's a fucking werewolf. She's a wolf. She's not a human anymore. So she doesn't no, even she, know. She'll get fed she scraps. She had some like conversation with Ginger at the end of the first one. Yo, do you think that the popularity, potential popularity of She Hulk, will bring back the potential for a Ginger Snaps uh, uh, sequel? There is a Ginger Snaps TV show in the works as of 2021, I believe. Ooh. Is it really? Uh, yeah, I could get down. I could get down with that. I don't know if I could. What else is? I'd there be afraid that they would Riverdale do? it. Yeah, they, like, uh... dude, they Riverdale every TV show. I there are only two TV shows that aren't Riverdale. Okay, what we do in the shadows and the boys. <laughs> that's it. <Yeah>. <laughs> True. <laughs> Listen, I'm in the middle of Umbrella Academy, and that's pretty much not Riverdale. But it's Riverdale right. with incest. But okay, that's true. Matt, do you have anything that you watched, listened to, read, experienced that you have so, to tell us about? So I read a book that I've been meaning to read for years. And it was, for a while, it was shockingly hard to find because I pretty much exclusively just buy my books from used bookstores. Uh, so I just, you know, pop in and get like 10 books for $10 or whatever. But I had to drive my friend to Barnes and Noble for something. And I said, you know what, let me just check and see if they have this on the shelf. And they did. So I bought it and I read it on my flight to LA. And that was the original Psycho by Robert, is it Block? I can even pronounce mm -hmm. it Block, yep. but yeah. yeah, Robert Block. And it's good. I mean, it. it's very interesting to see how different Norman Bates is described in the book versus the person who got cast as Norman Bates because he's kind of described as like a a portly, balding, strange man. Like they, they, I think they were really trying to go for like the visual idea of Ed Gain or Ed Gein. Oh yeah. But it's a good, it's a good quick read. It's you know 170 pages or something like that. I so love books that are 200 pages and below. Yeah. It's oh, so it good. was, and the chapters are all short enough, so it was kind of like. Like that really, you could have a 700 page book 
I've said this before. You could have a 700 page book, and if every chapter was like five to six pages long, I would read it quicker than I would read like a 300 page book where every chapter is 20 pages long because I can digest chapters where I'd be like, all right, I'm going to stop after this next chapter. But then the chapter ends well enough that I'm like, ah, I can, I can get another chapter in yeah. versus oh, those page like 20 turn. page. Yeah, versus like the 20 page chapters where it's like, at a certain point, I just don't have it in me to go another 25, 30 pages. I need to go get some shit done. Yeah. So, yeah, this yeah. is exactly like my sex life. Yeah. I don't have but 20 or no, more highly, pages. I do recommend it. Um, It's definitely worth reading. It's very wild to read if you've watched the movie as many times as I have because you're like, oh man, this dialogue was pulled like straight from, like the movie pulled this straight out of it. And it's like, oh, I know where this is leading. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. No surprises it, for Matt. <laughs> no, there's no twist ending in the book. It's. It's not like it's not like you know they really changed it up in the book. The mom's still alive and did everything. <laughs> Norman's innocent. Like there's no. No, like, that's Bates Motel. Yeah, but I recommend it. All right, Kyle. What about you, dude? Not much, man. I watched a a movie called Evil Eyes on Tubi. That's been uh, on my Carly list. Carly and I, you like you listen. You guys know by now what you fuck you say to me. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> I said that was on my list. Oh, stop it. Uh, no, this is a different. This is not two evil eyes, which might be actually be on your list with, which is Romero and Argento. This is a movie in, from 2004 by a director called Mark Atkins. And oh, Mark Atkins, letter, evil eyes. You remember Mark Atkins? And it's just it's the about Oscar. Oscar. It's God. about it has Udo Kier in it, which is always nice oh. to see. Uh, Udo oh, Kier wait. plays Udo Kier. What era? What Udo Kier? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, this is 2004. So like he's just mm. doing anything that comes his way. He did that, and um, then he did Blood Rain, dude. Mm-mm. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is. I think yeah, it's pre Blood Rain, so uh, you know it's good. But he plays a producer who hires a screenwriter who's down on his luck to write a horror script which is sort of based on like a true crime that happens in LA and the screenwriter goes back to the scene of the crime and he starts seeing all these fucking you know flashbacks of the crime and he ends up you know the people end up being murdered and is it really him or is he writing their murders into the screen you know it like it plays like a wannabe giallo film uh, mm-hmm. it plays like a wannabe te- uh, tenebra in a lot of ways right <laughs> Um, Great, soundtrack, and it's just but like listen, I I watch a lot of bad stuff. Mm-hmm. We know this. We're not mm-hmm. fucking new here, right? Yeah. But sometimes we really go out on a limb to watch something bad, mm-hmm. and sometimes we're rewarded. Um, we just weren't rewarded on this one. It's not a recommendation of what did I watch. It's literally answering your question and not a <laughs> suggestion. Because the other thing is like we um the the woodsman uh, the woodsman screened at uh, Bridgeport Film Festival this weekend. I should have just fucking said this. Forget Evil Eyes. Just even like just pr- pretend it never happened. <laughs> the woodsman screened at Bridgeport Film Festival, which is the home base uh, of our lead actor John R. Smith Jr. So that was like a hometown screening for us. We actually got to see it on a screen in person. So it was our first in person screening of the festival run that we have. And he ended up we we opened the festival during the Connecticut short films block because we're hometown. And then John walked out with a a best male performance uh, award in the comedy category. So like that is fucking awesome. I can't wait for everybody to see it. It's still early on, but that's the cool thing is that like the jury was made up mostly of actors. So I was like, they are seeing his craft like right up there, right up front. And like his peers are like it's not because like i'm not this isn't a direct for me but it's not like i somehow knew a festival director or like a programmer and they awarded us because like they knew me or they knew our producer like and like it is purely based on his performance which makes it all the better yeah like there's a bunch of you know a bunch of like local shorts a bunch of like new york made stuff like some really good short films that i hope see the light of day that if they do i will share them uh where they need to be shared so love it yeah. how about you scott what did you watch or read or do i finally got the opportunity to watch everything everywhere all at once damn it i wow. still haven't how seen do you it do i hear it's great but <laughs> it was incredible absolutely yeah. One of the most unique movies I've seen in my adult life. Um, I haven't felt that kind of positive feeling about, um, like surprise and positive feeling um, in a long time. It, it 
I don't want to overstate how great the movie is because it is a really great movie, but it also is great because it's so original. And I haven't seen a concept like that in such a long time. It reminds me of the feeling that I would get when I would see a fucking wild movie when I was 13 or 14. But that's also those movies weren't that wild. I just hadn't seen those concepts before, you know? So it it really gave me that feeling of like newness and appreciation for the craft and for creativity and the fact that they got the money to make this movie. It is such an out there concept. I think that the editing in and of itself is a master class because it's it's split second cuts that still are long enough to to make sense and move the story along. I think that it telegraphs healing generational trauma in an amazing way. And I didn't know that going into the movie. I cried a lot. I didn't want to. I don't think it's like a weepy movie. It's the con. It's therapy as a sci-fi fantasy movie. It is incredible. Mm. Um, And it's also really fucking fun and funny and silly. And I love the fact that they got people that really got to be weird in it i just i mean i i I don't have anything negative to say about the film i don't i just i hate to sound so effusive though because like i didn't love the first 30 minutes of it but it's a movie that was like a journey for me and and it was just so unlike i don't know if i'd call it best movie 2022 right like I i don't know probably because it's so different and so original and so special yeah. Um, but it also is not a movie that I have any desire to watch again because it was that journey. And I don't know if I want to experience that journey again. So yeah. beautiful. So, so clever, but also very heavy. It was literally I, like, like a month's worth of therapy. If you don't go to therapy, white men listening, if you don't go to therapy, you need some fucking therapy. All right. It's 2022. Get some therapy. Your girlfriend is not your therapist. Um, My wife is not my therapist, but also everything, everywhere, all at once. If you do not go to therapy, that's what it feels like after a heavy session. And also, if you do go to therapy, you might need some CBD beforehand watching it because (laughs) it is heavy. But it's an amazing film. Absolutely. Highly recommend it to everyone. Right on. Well, that is a that is a solid ending note. But I have a very quick Matt Kelly story time. To, to send us home and it, it is the tale of Matt Kelly's lack of a backbone and the mysterious <laughs> missing horror movie night merch oh um, no so, oh no so where's I, my money I, Matt so I shipped the boxes of shirts and trading cards to the Hilton Bayfront where we were staying in San Diego for San Diego Comic Con um, I had two choices choice number one was that I do it next day delivery. I was shipping it on a Thursday. The convention officially started on a Wednesday night. So I did next day delivery. It would be there by Friday. But the hotel policy was a $25 holding fee if they had to keep it overnight. So I was like, well, it would have been, it was a, sorry, it was a $12. It was a $12 holding fee. So the two packages combined would be about $25. And I was like, I'm I'm already having to pay an extra $15 for next day delivery on these packages. Then add on the 25. And I was like, you're guaranteed it'll be there Thursday. And they're like, Thursday would be the absolute latest it would get there. Like it could get there as soon as Tuesday. And I said, all right, let's roll the dice. Hope it gets there on Tuesday. I won't have to pay the handling fee or anything. So I roll the dice, we get to the hotel, I immediately go downstairs and I ask if they have two packages for a Matt Kelly that would have came through the United States Post Office from Pennsylvania. And he said, nope, we don't have anything of that description. And I said, okay. And I walked back. Then the next morning I checked again, still nothing. I took down a phone number where I could call them. I called them a couple times, no package. Thursday comes around. Now the show is officially open as an all day event and I'm calling again and they're like the, the United States post office delivery comes on at, comes in at one. So I called at like 
two thirty to give them time to process everything. And I said, nope, no packages from Pennsylvania came in today. So Friday morning, I'm taking a morning poop, <laughs> and I'm right, and I'm right next Drop it, to the post. The butt nuggets off. At yeah, <laughs> and I'm right next to the post office, and I'm like, I've got to check because they're closed Saturday and Sunday. So if it's not here today, I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. So I go in, and I'm like, look, I know it's a long shot. Do you have a package? And I, I again say it's coming in from Matt Kelly. It's coming from Pennsylvania. It would have been through the United States Post Service. Like I know all the questions that they're going to ask me. And the guy searches. And he goes, nope, I'm sorry. We have nothing. And then he's like, wait a second. And he goes to type again. And he goes, can I show you a package real quick? And you can tell me if it's yours or not. And he said, okay. And he holds up my package. <laughs> and he goes, uh, your handwriting was a little rough. We put you in the system as Matt Keeley. And I Jesus said, Jesus Christ. And I said, when did this come in? And he said, Monday night. And I said, awesome. And he goes, unfortunately, because we kept it overnight, you still have to pay for the holding fee. What? <laughs> and at that point, I was just happy to have the packages right. and paid it. Right. But I was just like, nothing when I said Matt Kelly package from Pennsylvania, two boxes from United States Post Office. Not a single person was like, I wonder if this Matt Kelly is the Matt Keeley that we have in our system. Like, how we like do they have their own mail room? Like, how fucking <laughs> like, big is like, <laughs> like, that's insane I to me. Couldn't believe I thought Jonathan London was going to, like, run in and choke somebody and get my money back. He was so that. angry when I told him that story. And meanwhile, I'm just like, look, I'm just glad I got the shit. Like, <laughs> because cause I was imagining a world where I spent a hundred... And almost $120 to ship shirts back to myself in Pennsylvania for no real no. benefit. Right. So I was like, all right. And we, side note, the positive side of that story, we fucking sold out of three designs at San Diego Comic-Con with cute. our shirts. That's awesome. There are no more wear a mask shirts. They are all gone. Oh, they are gone and fuck. done forever. We sold out of the amount of Rolla Crit shirts that I shipped out yes. there. Like. Nice. We sold a couple of Nick Cage shirts. We sold a bunch of We're With The Band shirts. Like, we did really well. A ton of trading cards were were disseminated across uh, San Diego Comic-Con. And uh, as far as I know from my test today, I didn't get COVID during the convention. So, like, Holy it's shit, all coming up. Yeah, it's, it's going great. Everything's coming up, Kelly. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I, I avoided getting it at Omicronicon. So ah, we are... that's fucking... Mm. <laughs> anyway... Rambling aside, that was... Oh, also, I guess this episode's going to come out just in time for uh, Creature Feature Weekend. We're definitely doing something there. What it is, I don't know. Check our socials. I'm sure there'll be answers. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for checking us out. Next week, I'm pretty sure it kicks off Listener Submit It Month. So strap in for good times. Hope you didn't fuck us this year. <laughs> listening to the Geekscape Network.